I will go ahead and remove the electronics. Uh, some of the things I'm gonna just mention what to do. So in my previous videos, I removed the rear and I actually removed the servo, just in case you did not watch those. Now the servo attaches this way, just like this. So you will need to remove the screw that is here. Uh, it's just a screw. If you have an older version such as this, it's going to be a Phillips II driver that you will need. If you have a newer version with the actual hex screws, you will need a two millimeter driver that will come out, just move it straight. And then you have four screws right over here. Again, Phillips two. If you have an older model, something like this, if you have one of the newer models with the hex screws, you will need a two millimeter driver. Uh, and then the servo will come out. But in order to do that, you will have to remove one, two, these two screws. It's a Phillips two. Flip the chassis over and you have one, two, three screws here. These will be 2.5 if you have hexes. These will be two millimeter if you have hexes. If you have a Phillips, they're all Phillips too. This will pop up and then once it pops up, uh, you can go ahead and remove those screws that I mentioned and just set this off to the side. And here we have this. Now there is a nut over here. This is a 5.5 millimeter. So you would just put this in here and then use your driver, two millimeter or Phillips two. This will come out uh, and then you have the link. To adjust the link, this is a fully, this is thread the same direction. This is the right hand thread the entire thing. So just thread right to shorten it, left to lengthen it. That's really all you do. Here, just remove that screw left this pops off, run power to it, make sure it's centered. So when you install the new servo horn, it's perpendicular. That's what you want. And it's going to be sitting this way, facing up. All right. Now that I've walked you through that, uh, we need the receiver box. The receiver box, this, this, this is uh, something I've always wondered why Traxxas didn't, just, they probably just had 20 billion screws and that's the reason why they didn't go to these hex, but this is a hex uh, driver. So you're gonna need a two millimeter driver and this little cover here has to come off. It's just the two. I'm going to go ahead and leave those screws on the cover. Just pop the cover off and move it off to the side. All right, and here, now this one's slightly different than the slash one. Uh, but it's still the same idea. So it's this screw here that's farther out and then this screw here that's farther in. If you remove the other two screws, that's a 2.5. If you remove the other two screws, uh, you're going to end up taking the entire thing and not opening up the box as desired. Let's see, there we go. Once the cover's off, you will have access. Now here, there's something very, very important. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. The antenna, I can actually remove the, oh, why is this stuck? Maybe I don't wanna do it. I'm not gonna remove this. Uh, this just seems too difficult. Probably because of the bends, that's the reason why. Uh, I straighten it out, oh, yeah, it's because of the bend on the tubing. Uh, this is my friends. But anyway, you would just remove the tube out. Uh, there's a little piece of metal. That's why it's not going through this bend very easily. I just don't want to deal with it, putting it back in. Uh, but the TQ receivers and TQI, they actually have two channel ones. So channel one, channel one, then channel two. When you install the servo again, it doesn't matter if you go first or second. Just make sure the tabs are pointing 
up uh, as far as the letters are concerned. Now your ESC, you're gonna plug into the third slot, that's channel two. If you plug them both to channel one, you're gonna turn the wheel and then the car's gonna go either forward or reverse and it's gonna steer at the same time. It's going to start glitching and doing weird things. So keep that in mind. All right, at this point, in order to remove this, all you need is a flathead screwdriver and you just place it down here, just pry up. Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna leave it there. I went to and showed you. And then just stick it back on once you're ready. Uh, these do go out after a while, so you will have to replace these. I'm not sure what the current price, maybe $35 as of this video, I could be wrong. Do double check, you can put in the comments below as well. If you have the price, I would appreciate it. Uh, if you're doing a spec class, you're gonna have to keep the, usually you keep the stock radio. So you're gonna need the same RX as you had to use the same TX, your transmitter receiver. Uh, but if you're swapping it out, just swap it out. And the double stick tape that Traxxas uses is actually very good. Uh, it, you can use it multiple times, uh, but that would be it. Now for the ESC, ESC I will go ahead and detach. Uh, I just noticed that my friend put electrical tape to hold these wires. I'm not sure why, but let's go ahead and remove this. I hate electrical tape. Well, the residue, it just, gets old after a while, the residue's horrible. Uh, tie straps, use that. All right, so uh, you just need to remove these two screws right in here, and then I will show you a little plate that is below, right below. And if ever you need to replace screws, just get hex screws. Hex screws are much better than Phillips screws. I mean, I'm sure Phillips screws are used because they're probably less expensive. Uh, but here we go. So I've gone ahead and removed this. Now, I'm not gonna remove this plate. I'm just gonna tell you what to do. One, two, three, four. Remove those screws. This will come off. There's nothing in there. It's just a cavity. The, in this model, there's actually a piece of foam in here. And that's so it creates resistance when you put a battery so the battery's not bouncing up and down. Uh, that's the only reason. If you do went into another system, sometimes they come with this plate, uh, then you would just place it there. Uh, you really don't need one other than this one. Just keep that one. Uh, Hobby Wing is a good brand to go with to replace, but you know, don't have a Hobby Wing uh, in stock. Now these, try to grab these on from here. And one of the things that you will notice is this little sleeve. Don't grab here because you'll never remove it. You have to grab sort of back here and then just pull. And that'll happen. Uh, so don't worry about it. It just sounds louder than scandalous. Uh, then it should, but that's it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the ESC back into the little mount. Now I have to get the little screw that fell out. It's right here. All right, so the ESC is back. That is all you do. So the cable, you would just run back through the box and then you would plug everything in. Now I am going to remove the motor, but I need to unplug it first. Sometimes you will just have to replace the motor, especially if you made a mistake in gearing it's very easy to burn these up and have them get to 170, 200, and then you'll start getting this electrical smell. Once you do that, you've probably fried the magnets. It'll still run. It will not have the same power it used to. You might as well replace the motor. Luckily, they're only about $25 as of the time of this video. I'm uh, just double checking. All right, this is the correct one. Now, this is the ESC. So again, when you're plugging everything back in, there's a channel one, channel one, then there's a channel two, and then channel three. So it's easier if you start top for bottom, you go second slot, 
make sure these little metal tabs are pointed up in relation to the letters. It goes right in there. Now you're gonna have two channels below it. The servo can go in either one, does not matter, should not matter, unless you have a weird receiver. And that is it, so the servo is now plugged in. Uh, if you ever replace the servo, get a uh, Metal Gear servo. Uh, I would recommend you get steel, uh, steel gear servos, those are better. Uh, if you buy Savox, uh, I do like Savox, I do like Protec as well. Savox is very easy with their numbers. So if you look at their numbering system, at the end, there's going to be two letters. If you see uh, MG, MG stands for Metal Gears, that's one that you can get. Now, Metal Gears is gonna be a combination of brass and steel. You can still damage those, potentially. I've broken them before. Uh, you know, if the vehicle's too heavy for the servo, you want that for lighter vehicles. Uh, so that's MG, Metal Gears. If you go with an SG, SG stands for Steel Gears. That's something I would get. I don't remember off the top of my head a uh, particular model that I run that I actually do like. I think it's the uh, Savox uh, 1258, maybe. It's something I would have to check. But it's an MG, which means Metal Gears. Uh, your other option is a TG. TGs are very good. Those are titanium gears. All right, so there's a piece of little weather stripping, little gasket, let's say, rubber bit. Make sure that is seated down first before you put this lid or else you're gonna bite on it and then it's not going to seal properly. And that's if you want to maintain the waterproofing. Uh, all right, so now, one thing that you want to do is run these wires and to make sure they're between those little tabs so that when you put that cover on, you don't bite the wires. Uh, here. So once you do this, just hold them down. Everything is good right in here. And go ahead and put some uh, a lubricant in there, type of some grease, even Vaseline will work. Uh, that's what actually seals it. Uh, if you do not and you run this in water or this falls in water, you will destroy the receiver. Receiver does not like moisture at all. Uh, found that out once. Well, I mean, I already knew what water would do. It just the vehicle accidentally fell in water. That's what happened. Uh, there's a video called uh, Gone Fishing, Techno SET. Uh, 410.3, dumps that thing in the river. Uh, I got it out though. All the electronics worked, uh, surprisingly, to my surprise, except for the receiver, which is fine. I just replaced the receiver. Uh, that was a Futaba receiver. The electronics are Tekken electronics. They're not advertised as waterproof, but man, those things run hard, even after being dumped in the water. Murky, murky river water. Uh, all right. So that is it for these two. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go ahead and remove the wheel so I can show you how to remove the motor. Uh, now the motor, I'm just going to point into how to remove it. Once you remove it once, you'll figure it out. Now Traxxas does have a little plastic mesh uh, adapter that goes on the motor. So you don't have to worry about the mesh, assuming you use the stock gears. Uh, there are optional gears. You would just turn that mesh over just 160 degrees over and That is all you would do All right, I don't know why I removed both of them. It's just a seven millimeter driver for this now Go ahead and remove this little cover and one of the things too that I recommend is if you do not have this little rubber bit just replace this with one of these because these, uh, you can simply just remove that little rubber piece and you will have access to the slipper and then you can make adjustments to the slipper clutch. A uh, friend and I were racing uh, not too long ago. Uh, we're doing a spec slash and his slipper was too loose, came loose. 
sometimes they loosen that's something you have to check but you have to remove the wheel and then remove this to access it so that's the issue uh, but that is it so in order to remove the motor this is all you have to do one two screws just loosen these out this will slide back and forth well not on this one because of that plastic you can see here that little black plastic right on there uh, that's so meshing is a no-brainer so you would just flip this entire thing over if you want with the optional gear uh, but you're probably gonna end up removing that because you're going to start playing with the gear ratio once you start getting a little more advanced maybe you swap out the system so you would just stick a piece of binder paper in there note paper bring the gears together tighten them down that's how you adjust your mesh spin this paper will pop out uh, and that's all you do now in order to fix the slipper and all of that uh, I'll go for the next video so in the next video I'll show you how to deal with that thank you so much for watching please go ahead and subscribe if you have not uh, hit the like button and comment below if you have any tips tricks or questions thank you for watching oh, 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 my, my, my hair my car my, my road <laughs>